Hi everyone! This video is an introduction to the lipids, the third type of macromolecule that we're going to be looking at, and the final type of macromolecule that we're going to be studying in this unit. What are lipids? Well, unlike the molecules that we have studied so far that had really consistent repeating patterns of their structure, the lipids are a group that contains several different types of molecules that all have really different structures. So the reason we put them all together in the same group is because they're all very hydrophobic. So the reason for the grouping is not structural so much as to do with this condition that they're all really hydrophobic. And if you'll recall, the reason for being hydrophobic is because these molecules are generally very nonpolar. Another thing to know about lipids is that they are not true polymers. So they don't follow that monomer-polymer pattern that we've seen before. Remember how amino acids could be joined together to form proteins and monosaccharides could be joined together to form polysaccharides. That's not the case with lipids. They do not share a common monomer that we use to build big lipids. And we'll go into their structure in more detail later. In terms of their functions, they have a lot of different functions too. So let's start by looking at this little seal pup over here. Now you can see that this seal pup has a lot of fat on its body and fat is one type of lipid. So this seal got lots of nutritious milk from its mother and now it's keeping that energy from the milk in the form of fat. So some lipids are used for energy storage, but you can also guess that those lipids are helping to keep the seal warm. And if you've ever been snowboarding, you know that certain fat deposits can be really useful for things like cushioning and padding. So another function is insulation and also cushioning. Some other different types of lipids are components or parts of your cell and organelle membranes. And still other types of lipids can function as hormones and are involved in signaling between cells in your body. So lipids do lots and lots and lots of different kinds of things in living cells and in living organisms. So let's take a look at the types of lipids. For this class, you're going to need to know three general types of lipids. First one is the triglycerides, which are also known as fats. They have this general structure. The next group is the phospholipids, which look kind of like that. And the last group is the steroids, which look kind of like that. So you can see they're really different in terms of their structures. They're not very similar at all. They don't all have the same monomers. But if you take a look, you'll notice that there are some parts that some of them have in common. So if you take a look at these diagrams up here and their labels, you might notice a couple of things that both of these molecules share, even though they look pretty different. So one of them is a molecule called glycerol. So you see that here in the triglyceride and here in the phospholipid. And you may notice that the triglyceride and the phospholipid also both have fatty acids. So there's a fatty acid in the triglyceride and there are the fatty acids in the phospholipid. So those are pretty important components of lipids, those glycerol and phos uh, excuse me, fatty acid molecules. So we're going to take a closer look at those. So glycerol is a really small molecule. It looks kind of like that. So you can see it has three carbons and it is biochemically considered an alcohol because it has hydroxyl groups. So there are those three hydroxyl groups. If we rotate the molecule 90 degrees, you could also look at it that way. There are the hydroxyl groups. So I mentioned that because we'll be seeing them in both of those formations in the molecules we look at. But because of those hydroxyl groups, glycerol tends to be fairly polar and hydrophilic if it's just on its own. But we're going to look at it in lipids where it's going to be a bit different. As for fatty acids, take a look at this. If you look at that molecule and what it's made of, you see it's pretty much just carbon, 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 and the hydrogens attached to it. So fatty acids are fairly simple molecules that are just long hydrocarbon chains. Now, if you'll think back to the relationship between carbon and hydrogen, you probably remember that the bond between them is nonpolar. It's a nonpolar covalent bond. So if we just have nonpolar covalent bonds all the way down this molecule, that's going to be a really nonpolar molecule and very hydrophobic as a result. You've probably noticed that there's also a carboxyl group down at one end of the molecule, and that's what helps the fatty acids react and bind to other molecules in order to make larger lipids. So we need to put these together, clearly. So fatty acids are capable of binding to glycerol using a process that you've seen before. So do you remember how molecules can bind to each other and form new bonds to build larger molecules? Yeah, it's that condensation reaction or dehydration synthesis. So if we have a glycerol molecule and a fatty acid molecule, and we want to join them together using condensation, we need to be able to find the ingredients for a water molecule. 
And you can see in these diagrams, they've already been highlighted for you. So there we have two hydrogens and an oxygen. They're going to come out and form water. But now this carbon and this oxygen are going to be kind of lonely, so they are going to come together and form a new covalent bond, just like that. And this can actually happen a few different times on one glycerol. You can see there's still a couple of hydroxyl groups available up here, sorry, down there. So if this happens two more times, then we'll end up with a larger molecule with three fatty acids on it. And we can have up to three fatty acids attaching to each glycerol. There's one other thing that you need to know about fatty acids, and that is that they can be either saturated or unsaturated. And these are terms we've heard before, so let's look at them in terms of fatty acids specifically. So you probably remember that if a molecule is saturated, that means it has the maximum possible number of hydrogens. So if you take a look at this fatty acid here, you can see it's got all the possible hydrogens it could have, and that's because there are only single bonds between the carbons in the hydrocarbon chain. Now, if you remember the day that we built these models, the beginning of the unit, you probably remember that carbons can rotate around a single bond. And so because of that, there are no kinks in the chain, there's no bends, and so it ends up being a long straight chain. So saturated fatty acids end up with a straight chain shape. If we look at a space filling model, it might look something like that. How about the unsaturated ones? Well, as you remember, that means they have fewer than the maximum number of hydrogens. So a molecule like this, you can see it could have more hydrogens there, but it doesn't because of the presence of that double bond. So unsaturated fatty acids have one or more double bonds between the carbons. You can see in this example it only has one, and it happens to be right in the middle, but it doesn't have to be. It's just in this example it's shown in the middle. And you may notice also that these hydrogens are on the same side. And that, do you remember what that's called? It's that cis formation. Unsaturated fatty acids are almost always going to be cis when you find them in living cells or out in nature. And because those hydrogens are on the same side and the carbons can't rotate because they're stuck in that double bond, these hydrogens are actually going to repel each other and cause a bend in the molecule. So cis unsaturated fatty acids are going to have this bent shape. So this example is indeed a cis unsaturated fatty acid. In a space filling model it might look like this. But you might be wondering, is it possible to have the hydrogens on opposite sides? Is it possible to have the trans formation? And the answer is yes, it is possible to have an unsaturated fatty acid with the hydrogens on opposite sides of that double bond in the trans formation. And that would lead to a straight chain shape because the hydrogens are far enough apart so that they're not repelling each other and allows the molecule to have this generally straight shape. But that almost never occurs in nature or in cells. So that transformation is possible, but extremely rare. And we're going to assume that for our purposes, any unsaturated fatty acids are always going to be cis and bent. So that's a general introduction to the lipids and some of their components. In class, we're going to cover the structure and function of triglycerides, phospholipids, and steroids in much more detail. So until next time, take care of yourself, take care of each other.